So, so I'll start with the, again the equivalence of CFG and PDS. If I could remember, so we have been discussing about it maybe for the last two lectures. Um, so in this first half of the lecture, I'll try I should complete this equivalence of CFG and PDA. And we are only left with half of the examples. So I believe we can do it maybe in 10 minutes. Um, and then I would be discussing about Turing machines. Um, you can visit these sections as well as pages from both of the books to get more details about the lecture. Um, and, and this was the theorem that uh, I was trying to prove, you know. So in which I, I'm saying like if you have some sort of CFG, you can construct a PDA. This is lemma one for us. And uh, I gave you some sort of algorithm for constructing, for constructing PDA from context free grammar. Um, in the very last lecture, we were trying to construct a context free grammar given some sort of PDA. And I, I, I discussed about an algorithm, so I believe you guys know about that algorithm. And then I was giving you an example where I was applying that algorithm. So I left it uh, maybe, you know, for uh, half of the example and the rest of the solution I would be discussing now. Um, so let's start with example. So I'll, I'll, I'll recap some of the slides that we did lastly. And I would, I would ask you guys to be involved in that as well. Um, now, now, Mariam said we have to simplify our, our machine which is given to us. So, what exactly you have to check for simplifying your machine? So, could you please tell me? Anybody? There, there should be one acceptance state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one acceptance and final state. Okay, okay. What else? And we should make sure we have either push or pop. We either push or pop at the same time. We cannot do both sets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, the stack so should be empty and, and, and stack should be empty before accepting state. Yes, so these are the three conditions, guys, you have to check in order to make your pushdown automata simplified. So first one is you should have only one accepting state. You can see in PDA there is only one accepting state, so you don't need to do anything over here. Now you have to make your stack empty before accepting state. So you could see I'm, I'm somehow taking this dollar sign out of my stack. So this means that that is becoming empty. So I don't need to do again for the second step as well. But if you talk about the third one in which it says each transition pushes or pop, you know, one symbol. So you have to either push or pop. So this means that that is something that is not true in this case. So you could see transition from two to three. Transition from three to four state and then four states to fifth state. So all these three um, um, transitions, they are doing push and pop operations simultaneously. So this means that you have to simplify this. And for that, you have to split this pop and push operation. And after doing so, you can get some sort of uh, PDA like this. So at this stage, guys, we have applied our first step, which was simplify the given. PDA. Now, the next step is to design context-free grammar. And I told you, you have to take care of two steps in, in, in this, uh, you know, development. So, first one is, you have to identify all transitions where SAM symbol is pushed and popped and vice versa. So, you have to check all those transitions where one symbol is pushed and at the next, somewhere in the next transition, SAM symbol is popped. So if you could find such kind of transition spares, you have to identify that. So if I do the same thing for this kind of example, that would look something like this. You know, in 1 to 2 and in 5 to 6, I'm pushing and popping this, this dollar sign. And similarly, I'm doing the, the other things as well, x, 1, 2, 3. So in these machines, these are the variables, guys, that have been pushed and popped. And they are same, you know. And for that case, we know that we can write some kind of rules like this. And and this first rule could be simplified. You know, you are saying lambda a to 5 and then lambda. So we know that lambda is concatenated with anything else that lambda would be consumed. So this, this rule could be written something like this. So I can maybe, uh, you know, simplify this rule. So I can say this is equivalent to A16. And uh, this implies A25. So if you talk about simplification. But, but again, you have to check. I mean, you have lambda over here, lambda over here. So you can identify which kind of, uh, you know, 
samples that you are scanning at the end of the day. So this is how you can check if the SAM symbol is pushed and popped at certain transitions. Okay. Now the next step in this process of development of uh, context-free grammar, you have to check you have to check some different sample is pushed and popped. So for example, I'm pushing X over here and I would be popping Y over there. So this means that both samples are not same. They are different over here. Okay. So you have to identify all those transitions. Once you can identify all those transitions, guys, you can easily write the corresponding rules. And then and rules would be quite simple. Okay. So for example, if I discuss about this first one, this is A to 5 is equal to, uh, A to 5 implies A to 3, 3, 5. So this means that uh, I have to go from 2 to 5. Okay. And I have to go from A to 3 and then A 3, 5. So this means that A to 3 is something like this. You know, and A 3, 5 is something like this. So you could see here, I can just uh, point out what exactly is pushed and popped. Okay. Um, yes. So if you look at this scenario, so here you are, you are somehow pushing one, you are somehow popping one within two, three. But in these cases, three to five, you are pushing two and popping two. You are pushing three and popping three. This means that that one is different from two and three. So you're not pushing and popping the same thing that you are doing for one case. So that's why you, you, you can write rules something like this. Okay. So here you split um, those, those transitions uh, in such a way you have A to three and three five and then here you can split A to four and four five. So you can consider this two four as one um, of the transition, one long transition and then you can consider this four five as the other one. So similarly, you can write rules for A to 4 and A 3 5 as well. So these are the rules which are based on the fact you are popping uh, the thing that is different from you are pushing the thing and vice versa. You can push and pop, you can pop and push as well. So these are the two important things that you have to keep in your mind. Um, Sam symbol is pushed and pop, different symbols are pushed and pop and accordingly you have to write those rules. And the third important step over here is that you have to somehow write, write terminals for the self transitions as well. For example, you can take self transition at 1, 2, you know, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this means that for every state where you can take a self transition, you have to add what? You have to add lambda rules. You have to add lambda rules. Now, some of them some of them could be some valid lambda rules that would be uh, applicable in your uh, your case but some would would not be so which are not applicable i'll tell you um, they are not and why they are not applicable okay so we have three kinds of steps uh, applied uh, in the design process first is you have to check if same thing is pushed and popped you have to check if the different things are pushed and popped you have to introduce terminals uh, that those those lambda rules for the case of self transitions. Once you are done with these three things, guys, this completes the design of your context free grammar. And if I combine all those rules, they would look something like this. So these are coming from the SAM symbol, push and pop. SAM symbol. These are coming from the different symbol, push and pop. And the third thing is coming from the self transition so this this uh, you know part is coming from the self transition self transition so this would be something like the self transition okay now i would ask one question from you guys so which of the rules they could be skipped out of these these lambda rules that are not part of your grammar so that would not affect your overall grammar if you skip them, which are the rules that are over there? Yes, guys. A two three implies A seven seven, A three four implies B eight eight, and A four five implies A nine nine. Okay, no, I'm I'm, I'm talking about uh, these sort of rules that we have for the case of self transitions. 
these sort of rules. So could you please identify which are meaningful over here and which of them are use, useless over here. So they would not change your context free grammar. If I skip something out of here, that would definitely change my context free grammar. Guys, you have to keep this fact in your mind. Uh, but which of them are from here, that would not matter a lot. A112, A66. Sorry, sorry, yes. So could you please uh, speak one by one? A112, A66. All six will be used. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So could you please tell us the reason as well? Could you please tell us uh, the reason? Because they are not included in the rules and mm -hmm. uh, they don't need uh, self transitions as well. Yes, yes. So these these sorts of non terminals they are not involved in this set of rules and this set of rules. So this means that they are meaningless. They are just staying over there. We would not be using our in the grammar. So if I remove those rules, guys, so that would simplify my grammar as something like this. So these are known as the final context-free grammar, but with minimal reductions. Minimal means the one that are necessary without including, you know, without missing any of those rules, your context-free grammar will be changed. 